What is up? This is your boy Anecdotal, and today we're going to take up the new and improved mock trial. Now, there's so many changes to mock trial, so let's talk about it. One, two new characters. Before we had Deku and we have Momo, and this time around, it is a lot easier. This time we have Kiroshima and Stain. Now, the first question that I've been getting by a lot of people is Should I now summon for Stain that the mock battle is here? And also, the Stain rerun is back. I never got Stain before. Should I get him? Now, in my opinion, Stain is pretty OP as a singular character. Even at S, I think he's super OP. Go ahead and get him if you want an OP character. Especially if you're newer to the game and don't have a lot of people. Stain, Stain is pretty OP. And there are not a lot of villains in the game. And just a future-proof potential content that we can get into the game. In case there'll be like a villain-only type of thing going on. There are only, what, like two villains in the game? Shigaraki and Stain. So, probably get Stain, man. Way better than Shigaraki. And that's about it. So, definitely get Stain. Uh, the other thing is, why should I play this game? Now, there are dailies within this game mode. One of them is to collect a certain amount of vials that you would use to purchase different type of buffs. Uh, beating up a certain amount of, of like little villains while you play this. And having one death. All you have to do is just like go into a somewhat difficult stage and then just turn off auto and then and just run into attacks and you'll have your death there pretty easy. That way you can go ahead and get a couple of the little like blue teal looking tickets that you can get in order to buy permanent buffs. All right. So this is what you want to do. Get your dailies done automatically, very easy. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm finding it way di uh, way less difficult than I did the first time around. There are two possible reasons for that. One, these characters are way better. We had Momo and Deku. And not the new world hero mission Deku, we had OG Deku and Momo. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> not the greatest characters in the game. They're definitely, I don't know, B or C tier, if I would have to rank them. Compared to Stain, probably S tier. Maybe you might, might want to bring him down to A because of all the new releases. But I, for me, I'd say he's still S tier. And then we got Kiroshima, aka Red Riot. And my dude, I would have to say, would actually be either A or B tier. And then like maybe high B if you play manually. Now, I also think that there are other improvements within this game mode, and one of them might be a more intelligent AI. So the other thing is, Kiroshima is now holding his Q for longer and almost always gets the counter because the other AI is always attacking. So it's not like him, him using his like counter will not end up getting a hit. So it, it seems to always work out. So leaving him on auto is actually really good. And then same thing for Stain, except of course that Stain prioritizes his W move instead of the E move that we're so used to using. And if you don't know what that is, the E move is basically the continuous slash. You just stand there, kind of suck them in a little bit because the range with that sword is pretty big. And then he just continuously slashes. That's the E move. That's the annoying move. Uh, the other thing you might want to know is that Stain has actually been debuffed. So yeah. Not as great in PvP, apparently, but I never use them in PvP anyways. So, uh, but I probably should try. Here's another thing. A good tip for if you, for you that are struggling really in this game mode is to avoid any of these elite matches. So every time here you see elite, those are going to be slightly more difficult. Yeah, the prize will be slightly better, but not so much better that you can buy an extra buff at the shop in the bottom left corner. You won't be able to. For the vast majority of this gameplay, the only thing you'll be able to do is get the last ultimate, maybe two of the, the, the commons or the rares, and one epic. That, that's it. Just one or the other. Not going to really be able to get much of anything else because you're going to have to work up one of the permanent buffs for the amount of mixtures that you get to buy those buffs. Now let's talk about what I'm going to be doing. So every single day, you can get a maximum of 8,000 tickets for your, for your buffs. You can't get any more. So once you do get your dailies out of the way, that automatically gives you extra tickets. Once you get to the 8K max, you no longer need to play the game mode. 
So just don't play it till the next day where you can get another 8,000. At first, everything will cost 1,000. After that, 3,000. No, is it? I think it's 1,000, 2, 3, and then 5,000. And I think 5,000 might be where it stops. If not, it stops a little bit higher than that. But I, I just don't remember. So on the first few days, you're going to get a lot of gains. It doesn't really matter what order you do it because you need to unlock specific levels to get the next buff. So if I want to go ahead and attack, uh, increase my attack buff as much as possible, that'll be impossible because I need to unlock everything else at level one first so that there's like a total level up for the permanent buffs. So you'll understand what I'm talking about later, but if it matters to you in the very beginning where it's a little bit more important, you want to go ahead and increase your the attack for all your characters first or you can go the the mixture route where it makes it easier to get buffs and buy buffs for me i'd rather just get my attack in faster so i can auto faster and then just click on stages and go so the other reason uh that you want to do this is is to get the buffs from the little the little trial that they have like they have a free a free little trial man i forgot what they call those things there's like a a free pack and then there is a premium you need to pay to unlock that little that little road oh someone comment down below what it is because it is killing me that i can't figure out what a pass there you go man there's a free pass right and then there's a paid pass so there's a little pass that you go ahead and get for doing those dailies you could only unlock them if you do the daily specifically and you only need to do the dailies like three times a week as long as you do all of them you fill that out and then there is a permanent like challenges versions of that where you could level it up and in there you go ahead and get free like aizawa bio and a whole lot of other goodies but the really big one is the huge hero coins that you can get i believe it's like 300 or something if you add it up maybe it hits like 400 i'm not sure yeah maybe four or five hundred you get some aizawa bio and you get a whole lot of other goodies that are going to be useful for you so you might as well do this and with the exception of maybe the first day you can auto the content throughout another thing you want to consider about whether or not you want to get stain is if you feel like ranking up so oh look at that also you get you get cards so they added another cool thing for this game mode where you get support cards. Now you could use up the support cards if you don't really like it that much. Or you could just always save up until you have two. Once you have two, waste the one you don't really care about. But the thing is, you can't use them in the endless mode after this. So you might as well kind of get rid of them. So, you know, save it for the boss or at a time where you think you're about to lose. And then, bam, you got it right there. But other than that, it really doesn't matter. It's not really a big deal at all. And right now, I think I think at the time of recording this, it might be either day one or day two of playing this mode. So my guys are not very strong because they don't have any of the buffs. Once they do have their buffs, they would destroy absolutely everything without trying at all. So I think it, yeah, I think it only took about three days and everything should be right around level three. Yeah, because you'll have, what is it, like 8,000, like 24k worth if you finish all the dailies, which are a lot easier. I think for the endless mode, it only took like two days. And both Kiroshima and Stain were able to go like past stage 10. I think one of them was somewhere in like 12, 13. The other one ended up being in like 16. It takes a long time to do the endless thing, but from what I remember, the rewards were like a thousand five hundred so you can easily get like a thousand five hundred per run of the eight thousand and it goes by pretty quickly so you're pretty good there so you you run these every single day to do your dailies like you run the actual mode two times one max if you sell your buffs so at the very end if you don't care about winning you can sell all your buffs and the mixtures that you get from selling your buff might actually save you time and you only need to do this once or you play it once in hard mode once you get all the buffs. But at that point, doing the dailies, uh, it might be a little bit counterintuitive because you don't need, you won't need anything anymore. So yeah, I, I think it's a good idea to just sell all of your buffs 
and then you can get your mixtures that way and your dailies will be done a lot faster and because you already leveled up your regular attack and your crit damage and your crit raids and and the amount of damage that you do and all this other stuff you will easily beat whatever mode you're on except maybe hard without many buffs at all and your dailies will be done in one run instead of having to do two it's not like the biggest thing in the world but i mean you do get to save some time and then you just go into endless and then you just go ahead and reap the benefits there i was thinking about farming endless mode for food for free because it costs nothing but time but the food that you do get is pretty low ranked even if you finish the entire thing and do all 25 stages it's not that helpful but if you do have nothing to do nah you know what nah man if you're gonna do that you might <laughs> you might as well just like use up energy or something i i don't know you tell me if you think it's worth it i, I don't think the exp that you get there is that worthwhile at, at that point if you're willing to spend that much time i mean you might as well spend money and that's coming from a free-to-play player so yeah so yeah, as you can see here, man, I pretty much just try to leave it. But every once in a while, you know, it gets so much slower. Oh, wow. Did I actually miss that? Yeah. Oh, also, new phone, man. So also new graphics. I'm finally able to set it to the perfect settings instead of the smooth setting. And everything really does look different. There's like so much more absorption and there's a lot more impact, at least visually when you set it to perfect instead so it's really cool man I actually it almost feels like i'm playing a new game <laughs> because of the graphics the the change is just so sudden like it looks oh look at this come on man there you go perfect timing amazing oh also i'm so used to doing the block into the w because that's how his actual kit works but <laughs> but these are all like basic right out of the box characters where those sort of talents are not there right now so <laughs> so that's not a thing you know that's not like a combo that's readily available so it's kind of crazy that I, i'm like hey how come that didn't suddenly proc but yeah it is what it is man there's another change other than you getting support cards other than you're getting two characters in stain and kiroshima that are a lot better the other one is that there are new buffs there are two there are two new buffs there's a attack speed movement speed type of buff and a max hp attack type of buff and both of them are pretty good man that means that any of those weird like speed buffs that you would get those movement speed buffs that are kind of useless actually will now increase your attack or attack speed and then the max hp ones that are also kind of useless will now have another function where it actually also increases your bp in the game where you could attack for more so now those are good things as far as going through the if you haven't seen my other video original video where i did this entire thing with deku you know you might want to reference that a little bit in case i'm not totally clear about things that have that, that are the same so there are a couple of different things you could have done in the first time around so on the first time around there was a plus 70 hp buff so you can get all these buffs as long as your hp is above 70 and then there's one where you can get all these buffs as long as your HP is below 50 or at 50. I still think the below 50 is not very good, especially now because there's all these things that increase your HP. I do think that the below 50 plus the thing that increases your max HP and continuously gives you more health really does help with the other card that makes sure to always lower your health if you're above 50. So that will, that will like help level you off and always be at 50 if you were lucky enough to get those two cards and i am wondering how that kind of trade-off will function where you will keep losing hp till you get to 50 and then once you do get below 50 something will keep pumping you back up so you'll always have that buff right at 50 and below 50 because of those two cards so that could be pretty op and that would be pretty interesting to see but there's like an alt type of build that you can do where you know you get stronger every time you use an alt and then uh your alt meter will continuously level up i don't think that's going to work very well for stain even though there's some aoe there it's because it's not very powerful but i am curious about it and the same thing with kiroshima his buff isn't really like his his special like his alts is not the greatest either so i don't think the alt build would be perfect but the good thing about the alt for kiroshima is it's basically an iframe but for stain you can you know attack in a straight line and i'm sure there may be a card that 
that increases like his AOE with his like air cutter type slashes and that might be good but I don't think alt is the way to go like that build is not the way to go this time I'm thinking the below 50 if you happen to get that car that increases your HP or just the above 70 and anything else that increases the attack speed because both of these guys are very slow man their attacks are very slow for Kirishima and the attack for Stain is kind of fast but if you speed it up the damage just multiplies even more so attack speed actually kind of matters this time around movement speed is like whatever but like i said they're making max hp and movement speed actually matter by fixing this game mode by giving you more buffs by increasing those things so just make sure you get the card that gives you more attack speed or attack whichever one it is for having more max hp or for having more movement speed they really did like 360 this game mode make it a lot easier a lot more fun they're actually characters that are way more usable like no offense to momo but eh and then deku again eh. <laughs> but we have a whole new build that we can use it's a lot easier the attacks you get are going to be a lot better and for sure for sure a lot more people are going to be able to finish this game mode hit level 25 and probably do the dailies more because everything will come much faster there's less of a grind for it and as much as i love grinding as a free to play and have that be one of the stable reasons why i'm able to be in the top 10 for literally every time event and for all the versus modes that are here except for real-time pvp where i actually have to do things you know i, I could be on top because of the grind but i am happy that the grind has lessened because I would spend a lot of time on this mock trial and this will be a lot more helpful for especially all the new players that are here for the Christmas event and for New Year's chilling not having much to do finally able to have some downtime and play games they got this to do and yeah so right here this is all auto all endless using the thing that I have if I were you I would actually try to title some of the things or and then also try everything out remember that you will be at your best when you max out all of not only your overall character buffs, but your specific character buffs. So the first buff that you'll see is like a kind of shared buffs that increase attack, crit, and damage for everyone. Then there will be one that helps you kind of get more, more uh, mixtures so that you can get better cards. And then the last one, the last two, would be specifically buffs for the skills for Kirishima and also for Stain. Obviously, if you don't have Stain, don't get the buffs for Stain. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> Only get the ones for all characters, right? Just overall strength for everyone. That way, everyone can go pretty far. And then you're a specific character, Kirishima, if you didn't have Stain. But yeah, definitely summon for Stain, man. He's really good. Also, if you see yourself uh, ranking up somewhere around like the top 10 or something like that, the rewards for being in the top are like 10 or more like uh summoning tickets for the regular banner so it's not like for an event banner but that's that's pretty good and if you happen to be in the top three you also get a title now i got destroyed on the title man for my server i ended up being third for for deku i believe and then for momo at the last minute somebody took it from me and it ended up being fourth and I wasn't looking. I just was like, oh, it's a lock. I'm easily third. Don't have to try. Boom. On the last day when I wasn't like, dude, before I shut my phone, I was third. When I woke up the next day, <laughs> I was sniped for my spot. I don't even know who has it, man. Don't know who has it. But you do get a 1% attack and a 1% defense for being top three in your server for each one. So if I could be top three for Kirishima and top three for Stain, that would be a plus 2% attack that I'll be able to carry with me temporarily though for like a month, yeah, for exactly 30 days. But if you somehow <laughs> manage to be top three worldwide or server wide for all the servers, it's a plus 2% attack and defense each. I mean, if you're already doing it for your own server, that means you also did it. Uh, I mean, if you did it for the world, for all the servers, that means you also did it for your own server. So could you imagine, man? That is a plus 3% attack. And if you did it for both, that's a plus 6% attack and 6% defense. That's 6% attack? Bro, that's what card effects do. That's insane. Like, you'll, you'll have, like, a huge boost. 
Man, so like you're definitely getting good stuff, but I do think that they should make a title for like I don't know, man. The top ten percent. I don't care how how like small your server might be, but let the top ten percent of the people that play in the server get some sort of title. Make it make it like a point five attack or something, you know? Like help everyone else out that actually participates in the event to make it a little bit more worthwhile and remember that those 10 tickets even though those summon tickets even though they're not from the event banner each one ticket is equivalent to 250 hero coins so that's 2500 hero coins right there like that's that's <laughs> that's nothing to scoff at that's a whole lot and i believe you get like 13 if you're in the top 10 and uh i think like it goes down but like it's pretty easy to get yourself at least seven if you do like just okay like you could auto your way there and for me i think i autoed my way to the top three i could have played manual but yeah man it didn't look like too many people were going hard on the first event but this time around with like characters that people love like i don't know how many people are standing momo but for stain bruh a lot of people are going to be playing with Stain. A lot of people are going to be going for top ranks. And Kiroshima is just such a likable character that I don't see people not going hard for him as well. Especially since, you know, that's, that's what his quirk is. Hey, got him. So yeah, dailies. Make sure to get all the dailies. What is it? Is it 8,000? Yeah, man. Eight, yeah, 8,000. Make sure to fill all of that up. Do those objectives. Go over there. Make sure to get everything. Go to your trial pass. There it is. And get that. Yeah, so 5,000 for level 2. Then I think uh, level 3 is almost done. So do the normal ones for everything. That's a shared thing. And then you can go to your character exclusives after. At least that's the way I'm going. But honestly, it doesn't matter, man. It really doesn't. Uh, for this, even though this says uh, weekly, you can if you knock out all the dailies, it will actually only take like 3 days if you do it all. And then you can check out your endless mode rankings. You can see that what the top three get. And you actually need to go to your titles to see the 1% attack uh, and defense bonus that I was talking about and what they are. But yeah, man, Aizawa, bro. And look at all this. We get energy and then we got the huge hero coins there at the end. I don't know if it's worth it to spend. I feel like it is. But as someone who doesn't spend, I really don't know what the value is. But the huge thing here is the ult the alt circuit that's a whole lot of rng it's worth a thousand of those star thingies when you're doing a uh, hub defense or team up so it's worth it so i mean in my eyes so this has been your boy and don't if you like this video man make sure to like it share with anybody from the mha community of course don't forget to make yourself known and comment down below peace